Hey guys, my name is Tom, and in this devlog I'm going to add rocks to the island, implement swimming mechanics, and hopefully sort out the broken player movement when on board ships. It's 7.30pm, and I just made it possible for players to drown. I basically just set up a timer that keeps track of how long it's been since the player was above the water surface, and if that exceeds a certain time, you start to take damage. Just like when you get shot, once your health reaches zero, you get teleported to the death cube which now also looks like it's underwater since it's far below the rest of the world. I think for the rest of the evening, I'll work on adding some rocks to the island. Procedurally generating those shouldn't be too difficult since I built the tree generation algorithm with rocks and other objects in mind, but I'm going to need a rock model. As you just saw in that time lapse, I put together what I think is a decent model and it actually didn't take long. Obviously a rock isn't a particularly complex thing to make, and pretty much any shape will do the trick since they're naturally very lumpy, but it took just over 20 minutes and that's including the time I spent figuring out how the sculpting tools work. Then I integrated rocks into my tree generation system, which required a few minor tweaks to make the probability work properly, but overall that was really easy. I also gave the server the colliders so you can't walk through the rocks, which means I can mark the environment generation task as finished. I'll be adding more objects to the environment in the future, including variations of the rocks and palm trees, probably some other tree types, and definitely some bushes and other undergrowth to make the whole thing look more tropical and overgrown. While I did all this, I also made a couple changes to the player's buoyancy system to prepare it for proper swimming mechanics, but that resulted in the player's gravity being almost doubled. Once I fixed that, I noticed there was still some really weird stuff going on with the movement. I could jump just fine, but sometimes I'd start walking and then get yanked backwards, and for quite a while I thought it was some other problem being caused by the buoyancy code. Eventually, after I had already added the issue to the bugs list on my Trello board, I realized that the server was spawning way more rocks than the client. I had accidentally given rocks a 30% spawn rate on the server instead of 3%, which is what the client is using. Since the client only had a tenth of the rock colliders that the server had, the prediction code allowed the player to walk through rocks that existed on the server, but then the server would say nope, get back here you cheater, and you'd get yanked back, only to walk right back into that rock again. So yeah, that was my mistake of the evening, and although it was somewhat frustrating to have wasted time on that, it's also strangely amusing. It's now Thursday, but it's actually been over a week since the last update. Last Wednesday and Thursday I participated in my first game jam which was a really great experience and I'll be making a video about that at some point in the near future, but that did take most of my time last week. Besides that, I also had to edit Saturday's video and this week has just been strange so far. I'm honestly not sure how else to describe it, but besides a few things that I took care of which were unrelated to the project, I haven't made any progress. My sleep schedule has been extremely wacky and I think that's a big part of why I've failed to accomplish much in the past few days. I also received some feedback that I talk about procrastination too much, and I'm a little unsure of whether that's true. I know that I do mention it quite frequently, but that's because it's something I deal with on a regular basis, which I'm trying to overcome. Most of you guys probably come here to see progress, not to hear me talk about how I spent my time doing nothing, but I'm not a progress machine. I enjoy watching other people's devlogs too, but quite often they only talk about what they've accomplished. There's nothing wrong with that, and it could very well be that others don't procrastinate as much, but sometimes I have to remind myself that they're also human and probably struggle with things at some point or another. Over the past few months, I've received quite a few comments from people saying things about how much of an inspiration I am and how they wish they could always be as motivated as me. And whenever I read those kinds of comments, it bothers me how inaccurate they are. Believe it or not, I'm not always motivated to get stuff done. At the same time, I can totally see how hearing me talk about how much time I wasted is going to get old really fast, so I'm not sure what to do here. If you've got an opinion on whether or not I mentioned procrastination too much, please let me know in the comments because it's quite difficult to gauge how beneficial those parts of these devlogs really are. Anyways, I'm going to actually get to work now because it's about time I made some progress. 
It's 11pm and I just finished implementing swimming. I can't believe it took this long, but that's partially because I spent way too long trying to figure out why my player was jittering when underwater. After what was probably at least an hour, I realized that I had made some changes to the player's gravity because I don't want gravity being applied when the player is underwater, but when making that change, I forgot to account for the water height. The system basically always thought that the player was above water, so it was always applying gravity. Since the server wasn't applying gravity when the player was underwater, the client's predictions for the player's movements were constantly incorrect, which resulted in some extreme rubber banding. I'm glad I sorted that out, but I'm quite frustrated that it's already so late. There was a lot more I wanted to get done, and the fact that I wasted so much time this week already makes it feel even worse. The swimming mechanics are still pretty basic at this point too. The player's collider doesn't rotate yet, and swimming is still really slow, but I'll improve that later. When you're underwater, your movement is based on the direction you're looking in, which sounds just like regular movement, except that when you're swimming it works vertically too. Looking up while holding the W key will cause you to swim upwards, while looking down causes you to swim downwards. It's similar to how Minecraft's swimming mechanic works. I think I'll probably put in a few more hours tomorrow morning before moving on to editing this video. I'd like to sort out the jittering when on board ships. Considering this game revolves around sailing, I think it's somewhat important to actually be able to, you know, sail your ship. I haven't been able to sail around in a couple weeks now because the jittering is so bad and a lot of the sailing footage in recent devlogs has been a bit outdated, so I'd like to get that fixed up. Okay, it's Friday evening now and unfortunately things haven't gone quite to plan. I've been working on the jittering issue, but I've now run into some errors and weird behavior which I can't figure out. I started by giving the ship a ghost collider on the server. The idea was that since the client sees the ship in the past compared to what the server sees, I thought if I added a second collider for the ship that trailed it by a fixed amount of time, I could decrease and possibly even eliminate the discrepancy in starting positions between the servers and the client's player representations. The problem is that I can't actually tell if it does what I need it to do because there's another part of the issue. The client corrects its predictions whenever it receives a state update from the server, but I wasn't rewinding the ship's position which would cause the player's corrected predictions to sometimes overlap with the ship collider. Since the physics system doesn't like it when colliders are inside each other, the player then gets pushed out of the ship collider, and then the predictions are incorrect once again. To get around this, I added a system that should also be rewinding the ship when the player's movement is re-simulated, but I've run into some dictionary errors. Supposedly I'm trying to add things to the dictionary which it already contains, but I don't understand why that's happening. Of course I could just check beforehand if the dictionary already contains the key I'm about to add, but that would only prevent the error from showing up. I'd basically just be fixing the symptom and not the cause, because the fact that this error is even occurring means I made some kind of mistake or incorrect assumption somewhere along the line. It's getting to the point where I'm beginning to wonder if I should just scrap all my prediction code and save it for later. I really want to work on actual content and gameplay, but having a half done prediction system just isn't going to work. Either I need to scrap it or finish it. It honestly seems like adding prediction and reconciliation at this point is basically just premature optimization. My needs for these systems might very well change as I develop the gameplay, and although responsive movement is quite nice, it's really not a necessity this early on. If I were to scrap the prediction systems, I could actually get a somewhat playable version together a lot sooner, and that seems a lot more important than a faster response time. I wouldn't consider this time wasted either, because I've learned a ton over the past few weeks, so I think I'm leaning towards scrapping it. Getting some proper gameplay going would probably also make for some more interesting devlogs, so that's another bonus. However, I'd really like some other opinions on the matter, so if you made it this far, let me know in the comments if I should scrap client prediction and reconciliation for now and work on gameplay, or if I should see it through and get it working before moving on. Anyways, as much as I'd like to end the video on a breakthrough, I really need to get to work on the editing, so I'll have to leave it here for this devlog. If you enjoyed the video, please take a moment to destroy the like button, and check out the Discord server, there's a link in the description. Also, if you'd like to join me on the rest of this development journey, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell, because I think these devlogs are going to get a lot more interesting in the next couple weeks. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next Saturday with another video.